In just a few minutes, we'll talk about living on mission. Um, but I want to take a couple moments to just share uh, what's going on in Mary Jo and I's life. And I certainly wish she was here today. Um, she's, she's actually homesick. So the devil, uh, I know, is out to get all of us. And we talked about that enough during our previous series last year. And uh, it just seems he's been working overdrive on our family to try to keep us from it. I know she did not, not want to be here. I'm sure she's watching us um, online today. And she's a very incredible woman who... Uh, <laughs> who graciously um, has loved and cared for me for since I was 18, you know, so a uh, long time. I'm getting old, maybe. The Lord will let me. Forgive me again. If you didn't hear, uh, maybe you're new to Journey Church. Um, on November 16th, I woke up the uh, day before I see some of my friends from SWAT and others who were here today and uh, hanging out with them the night before having a good time and woke up the next morning and, uh, you know, felt like something was wrong. You know, something just wasn't right. I wasn't feeling the way that I should. I was incredibly drained. And um, I walked in and I told Mary Jo, like, hey, I think I got to go to the hospital. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I think something's wrong. And uh, she ended up taking me to St. Vincent's down there in Middleburg. And um, they got in and they started running a series of tests, you know, uh, uh, for my heart. And they got through uh, two different tests and they're like, we're not seeing anything wrong. And then they ended up doing a cath test and uh, they, they got through that test and they like, oh, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so uh, I, I ended up with uh, an open heart surgery, an emergency open heart surgery. I had uh, five bypasses, which I never even heard of before. I had no clue that one could get five bypasses, but um, it was a very scary moment. And, you know, I've preached on that topic of, uh, you know, life is but a vapor probably 500 times. Um, but until you really live it, maybe you don't know it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in today's message and, and the importance of that and the importance of living for today, the importance of, um, you know, knowing your God, loving your God, serving your God, and making the most of every single moment. Mary Jo, as I said, is just a incredible woman and she took care of me and she wasn't alone there are many more of you thank you so much for the great outpouring of love that everybody um put forth uh, j just the little things all the time you know we our house was like a hospital ward it was kind of crazy we got out and got home um and then a week after getting home my daughter who lives with us right next door um ends up going into the hospital to have her baby which was a very good thing but she also had a c-section so uh it was a complete chaos <laughs> around our house and others like Kurt I thank you and your family for for coming out Kurt was kind enough to stay there and be my babysitter for a while and uh, there were precious moments that you just seemingly would take for granted like the fact that my wife wouldn't have had the opportunity to go see her grandbaby be born because I couldn't move you know it was insane I couldn't get up I couldn't walk I couldn't get out of the chair and uh, it was I had to be cared for for the first time which is a really strange thing for me because I prefer the other role right I prefer to uh, care for others, and I've spent most of my life in that particular way, trying to take care of the needs of others rather than myself, but God had to maybe slow me down just a little bit. There were some benefits for those who are around me. Um, when they took out the vent, I had to be on a ventilator, so when they took out the vent, it kind of scratched my um, vocal cords and uh, made it very hard to talk. So I felt a little bit like John the Baptist's dad, Zacharias, um, who couldn't speak for about eight weeks. So my wife was really happy over that, maybe for a while that I couldn't speak, but uh, I still struggle a little bit with my words. So people might have wondered, you know, why is it taking so long for Eric to come back? I literally couldn't talk for eight weeks. It was a crazy, crazy thing and a crazy time. But uh, Thankfully, most of those things are starting to come back. Whether my wife likes that or not, I do not know. But uh, you know, the, the, it's good to be able to talk again, believe it or not. It's so strange to not be able to communicate in that way. It's a, it's a very odd thing. Um, one story that I, I, I've shared to a number of people that was kind of funny that you can get a little bit of levity in the midst of things and just how your mind works when you're going through those moments. So we're about five days into the hospital and I hear the doctor talking to my wife and I wasn't getting much better, right? Uh, I had to spend a few days in the critical care unit and I, I wasn't responding the way that they wanted me to, to be able to start to prepare to get out. And I hear him saying, Eric's got to take some pain medication because when you, when you go through that, you have trouble breathing. You can't get a full breath and uh, you're, you're in pain. And then he's saying like, Eric's got to take some 
pain medication. I'm like, who told you don't give me no pain medication? Like, what are, what are you talking about? You just sawed my chest in half here. Like, what, what's going on here? Like, something's not right. And he goes, well, when you came out of the surgery, you know, you said that you were an addict and that you didn't want no pain medication, so we didn't give you no pain medication. I'm like, you can give me some pain medication. I'm under, I'm under the doctor's care at this particular moment. But, you know, at Journey, we've always been about the addict. We've always been about trying to help those who find themselves in that, that kind of a situation. And um, that's part of my story as well. And in one sense, it's good to know that even in the midst of coming out of something like that, my mind was still saying, Eric, you're an addict and you don't want to go back to there. But I'm here to tell you today, if you are struggling in any way, shape, or form with addiction, man, there is hope. Get your butt to CR on Friday nights. Come out and get some help. You know, God will transform your life. Uh, he's no respecter of men, and uh, he did it for me. He could do it for you. Um, before I go on, I want to thank Pastor Adam, Joey, the entire staff for more than holding down the fort. <laughs> the elders of Journey Church who you met a little bit earlier. Um, would you do me a favor, Journey? Just give them all a huge round of applause. They did it. As we begin to look ahead, um, I need to take it a little easy for a while, you know, maybe for longer than I'd like. I, I, I've, I had some conversations this week where I think, you know, my mind maybe is ahead of where my body is, you know, and I think I could do things that I can't. And there were some things that got revealed even this week where I just can't do some of the things I used to do. And it's kind of frustrating, you know, for, for a guy, you're like, hey, I, I can do these things, but no, you can't. And they tell you um, from the doctor's perspective that you got to slow down for a reason, you know, and I don't want to slow down, but I need to slow down. And, um, you know, that means some different things that, that might happen around here. But um, I'm super grateful. We had a teaching team in place prior to what happened to me. And uh, man, they've always been great. What a beautiful blessing it is at Journey Church that we have so many amazing um, communicators. You know, how awesome is that? And Journey, I want to thank you guys too, because you've been there the entire time. You've embraced the mission, the vision, the values of Journey Church, which we'll talk a little bit more about today. It didn't matter who's speaking, you still show up. You want to continue to grow. You want to continue to learn. You want to continue to make a difference with your lives. Give yourselves a big, huge round of applause as well. So you can expect Mary Jo and I to be here every week moving forward like we always were. Um, we're going to probably preach every couple weeks instead of every week. We're going to stick with that teaching team concept just to make sure that I can get um, healthy. And I hope you'll honor us in that and keep doing what you've been doing. Can I get one more amen for that? Let's go ahead and pray and we'll get into God's word for today. Father, we thank you. We praise you. I give you glory. I pause and give you glory today. Out of every breath that we have, as we shared in song earlier, let it be a praise unto you. Fathers, I have this great privilege of standing here on this stage and sharing the good news of the gospel with anybody who would listen today. I pray that you would honor your word, Lord Jesus, that people would come to know you as their Lord and Savior, that people's lives would be changed in this place today, that addicts would be set free, that people would get hope, Lord Jesus, that people would just surrender their life to you and live every waking moment for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So we're starting this series today called The Church That I See, and a big part of it's going to be about the mission, the vision, the values, what makes Journey Church who we are. In some ways, it's an extended version of our growth track that we teach, and if you haven't gone through that the next time they offer it, I can't encourage you enough to go through it. Before we dive deeply into that for a few minutes, I wanted to share with you some of what God's been saying to me. In James 4.13, it says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we'll go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you don't know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and vanishes away. So now I've preached that for the 501st time. <laughs> But I want you to really hear those words because I think that's how much of us live our lives. And I know I certainly did. Oh, I'm going to work. I'm going to do this. And here's what's going to happen. And, and we put these things in our mind that everything's going to be right. And we're always going to have a tomorrow. And, and I'm here to tell you that nothing is guaranteed, that tomorrow's not guaranteed. 
if my life is any representation of that, I pray that you'll grasp that before you leave here today, that you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You too could wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you're not feeling just right. And you're like, your entire life will change in an instant. Doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, we're all given just this day. In AA, we always talk about yesterday is but a memory. Tomorrow is the future. The only thing that you really have is today. And I'm going to have to get used to this mic again because it's driving me kind of crazy right now. <laughs> All you're guaranteed is today. How are you going to use today? How are you going to use today? How are you going to make the most of today? That's something I'm really trying to grapple with because, you know, now I have this better understanding that there is a finish line that's coming. I don't know if that finish line for me is a couple days from now or 20 years from now. I don't know. But it certainly seems a lot closer than it did a couple months ago. I'm not guaranteed tomorrow at all. It's changing me, and it's changing the way I think, and I hope that you don't have to have a heart attack for that to happen to you too. I hope you'll grasp that today, that you have an opportunity today to live for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to make a difference with your very life. Psalms 23, 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And your rod and your staff, they'll comfort me. I've had more time than I'd like to think about that. I used to preach that kind of a verse, you know, at a funeral, right? But guess what? There's all kinds of peaks and valleys that we have in this life while we're alive, is there not? You know, I got to live this verse out, and guess what? I'm here to tell you that it was true. God was with me. I was on a vent. I needed a vent to breathe for me. They took my heart out of my body, right? I was dead. And I came back to life and God was with me the entire time. And he's giving me a new level of intimacy that I wouldn't have had with him otherwise. He had to slow me down and separate me from the things of life. And if I have any caution to tell you is take those moments now. Don't be all about things that don't really matter. Because there's a lot of stuff we do that just doesn't matter. How much stuff do you do each day that just doesn't matter? But there's a lot of stuff that does, and our time here is so, so short. I've thought a lot about wilderness verses as well. Because I feel like I'm in a wilderness. I went from going 100 miles an hour to, like, having nothing on my schedule, which is a very strange thing for me. And at first, when I went into it, I'm like, the wilderness is a terrible place. Who would want to go there? But the more I kept reading on it, I started to think about Jesus' time in the wilderness. And guess what? After he left the wilderness, it led to the launch of his earthly ministry. Elijah, who I've been studying in great detail, he went by a brook that dried up because of his own prophecy out of his own mouth that there would be no rain. But God supplied him even in the wilderness. He had birds come up and actually give him meat. And then when that brook ended up drying up, he goes and what does he do next? When it's time to leave the wilderness, he goes and he meets a widow who was on her last bit of food. And then he ends up being the instrument of God's glory to create a miracle where guess what? She ended up having food. And here's how God works in our life. He doesn't give you like such an abundance all the time that you don't, you're no longer dependent on him. He fed her each and every day and him each and every day for two to three years. And I've read that particular scripture over and over again. And I don't know why I thought it was some momentary singular miracle where he fed her and then they survived. And then guess what? She would have died the very next day if that was what it was all about. And that was the end of the story. But taking on new eyes to see, he takes care of us each and every day. You only have one day to live. That's today, right? None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. If she wouldn't have stepped out in faith when he asked her for that food, guess what? The miracle wouldn't have happened. Church, we need to be a people who consciously know our God and live for him each and every day of our lives. What a great way it is to live. In many ways, I still feel that I'm in the discovery phase with all that God is saying. 
But I know at this time, of, uh, I find myself and Mary Jo finds ourselves at a time of preparation for the next season of what God wants to do in and through our lives and our ministry. And I fully believe that the next season is going to be better than the first. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen to that one? The next season will be better than the first. I've shared enough about me and what God's been speaking to me. Let me turn my attention to you for just a moment. I'm not the only one that's been going through a wilderness season, right? I think in many ways, this whole COVID experience over the past few years has been a wilderness season for all of us, a time of reflection, a time of rethinking. But thanks be to God, I feel like we're finally coming to an end, that the clouds are beginning to part and that there may be a future and a hope for all of us. Amen. God's got something that he wants to speak to each and every one of you. And I want you to experience something that the apostles experienced. I want you to experience something that the disciples have experienced throughout all of the ages. I want you to experience what other people at Journey have also experienced. I want you to experience the joy of living sent. The joy of being a person who lives on mission while concurrently sensing the urgency to live out every single moment for Christ. Christ sends us out on mission, and many of you are going to think my message for today is too simple. But sometimes, guess what? The simple is what really matters. And when we look at this simple stuff, somehow it's very difficult to live out in practice. You know, I heard over and over again, and I've shared this from the pulpit many times before, you know what you got to do if you want to lose weight and get fit? You got to work out and you got to eat right, right? Sounds pretty simple, isn't it? Why y'all laughing? <laughs> it's pretty simple, is it not? But very difficult in practice. And sometimes our spiritual things are just the same exact way, right? So some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you are really a long form of our spiritual growth track material, as I shared earlier. Again, go to that the next time they offer it. I often think of things in terms of corporate mission as well as personal mission, and I'll break some of it down that way as well today. God tells us in Scripture that he'll make us fishers of men. He catches us, then he releases us. And when we think of the big mission of the church, the Sea City Transformation, it begins with individual transformation. You see, as God transforms one of us, he releases us to go back out there and then share what he's been doing in our lives with others with the hope that they too will be transformed. Can I get an amen, right? And then if you do that enough times, guess what? A whole city can be transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation. If we're willing to be fishers of men, if we're willing to be vessels for God's glory that he could use. I'm here to tell you, whether you think it or not, that God created you with a purpose in mind. He created you with a mission to accomplish. He created you with a destiny to achieve. He called and set you apart to be a part of the greatest mission of all time. And none of you sound excited. That is actually very, very bad. My question for you today is, do you understand the assignment? Now, I almost got in trouble. I don't do the TikTok thing, but I heard it was trending on TikTok that said something along the lines of some videos that say, do you understand the assignment? Have any of you seen any of those videos? Any TikTok people? Anyone willing to admit it? Y'all are a bunch of liars. I know y'all seen some of that stuff. So I asked Joey, like, hey, Joey, man, maybe it would be funny. We could go get a video with, don't you know the assignment? He said, Eric, man, I listened to that song. You don't want to put that thing up there. Like, so I'm like... <laughs> As naive as I am, right? But say, I'm going to redeem it for God's glory. I'm going to ask you, do you know the assignment? Let's talk about what the assignment is, just in case you don't know. How do we apply the assignment? It's actually very, very simple. It stands for the church and for us as well. Matthew 22, 37, and Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What does that really mean? How often do we go through our lives just as busy as we can? We get up in the morning. We say our prayers like that. We sit down. We say, thank you, Jesus, for our food. And then we go about our day, and we don't really 
think about what Pastor Adam's been sharing a lot about in recent weeks and what others from our stage have as well, developing a level of intimacy with God. Do you have an intimate relationship with God? Or does he seem like some distant figure, this cosmic figure of the universe? Well, Scripture says he wants to have a relationship with you. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. And then how is that often reflected? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? How many of y'all hate your neighbor? Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Right? You know, when you think of church in a corporate sense and all that it stands for, you know, the more I keep reading about it, it's James 126. Go out there and help the poor, the hurting, the lost. But that doesn't seem what modern day church is all about. It seems a lot more about the lights and is it the right speaker that's up there on stage? Is it the right musicians? Do they look the right way? Do they in entertain us when we walk through the doors on Sunday? That's not what Christianity is all about. I'm here to tell you. God is not pleased when that's the focus of our attention. I saw an ad on Facebook this week that disturbed me for a church that's launching a new location. And it's like, show up and we'll give you Disney tickets if you show up. You have a chance to win Disney tickets if you show up for it. It hurt and grieved my heart. I wanted to go out there and say something, and I said, I'm a pastor, I can't do that. It just, it just won't go over well. But does Jesus really need us to offer other people Disney tickets so that we can come to church? Is that what churches really come to? Is that what churches really come to? Come to church, and I'll give you a free flat screen television in Jesus' name. <laughs> but that's what modern day American church in America has become to a big extent. Whatever happened to love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength, soul, and mind, love your neighbor as yourself, and then go into all the world and preach the good news of the gospel, that making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe the things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. That is the essence of what Christianity and the church is all about. Love God. Love God others go out there and make a difference with our very lives if we do it right we'll have the great privilege of seeing our cities transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation at journey church for so many years we talked about loving God loving others and serving the world at times we framed it as identity worship community mission these buzzwords are a huge part of the call on the life of every believer in Jesus Christ we have a corporate calling. We have an individual calling, but that is our assignment. It seems too simple. Eric, are you really just going to preach on the Great Commission and the Great Commandment? That's Christianity 101. I know that. Then why do so many Christians have so much trouble putting it into practice? Why do we have so much trouble putting it into practice? We let so many other things get in the way. And let me tell you, the amount of money in my bank account didn't matter when that happened to me. The things that I did didn't matter to me. The toys that I had around my house didn't matter to me. None of that mattered to me, right? It was my God and my family were all that I was thinking about at that moment. My God and my family, that's all I was thinking about at that moment. And in many ways, that meant the extended family here at Journey Church too. But all the accomplishments here are not still didn't pale in comparison to knowing and loving the Lord my God with all my heart, all my strength, all my soul, all my mind. And the things that I felt guilty about were all the distractions that I allowed to get into my life and take me from that purpose and take me from that calling. Lord, help me to be focused on the things that really matter. The first verse that inspired Mary Jo and I in launching Journey Church was Luke 19.10. It said, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Like those other verses we read, sounds so simple and yet so pr uh, profound at the same time. Practical maybe even at the same time. But is that what your life is about? I've often shared... You know, if that's what Jesus' mission statement was in life, should that be what our mission statement is in life? 
to seek and save that which is lost, how much of your life is actually dedicated to sharing the gospel? How much of your life is about telling other people what God's done in your life with the hope that they too would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? And the end, I'm telling you, that's all that really matters. All your accomplishments in an earthly sense are not going to matter. Paul says they're but like filthy rags. They're nothing when it comes down to it. The only thing that's going to matter is who you bring into heaven along with you. Journey, could that be what we're about as we enter in this renewed season of remembering who we are and why we were created? Would we never get distracted from that primary purpose? So if I were to break it down, your mission is to live in God's presence. And out of that overflow, go for the lost, the hurting, the downtrodden, the poor, the up and outers, you name it. That's what our lives should be all about, right? Seeking and saving that which is lost. You know, Adam says, corporate encounters lead to personal encounters. And I agree with that. But at the same time, I think you could also reverse it because if the leaders of the church are not having personal encounters, they're never going to have corporate encounters that lead to personal encounters and vice versa. It's a, it's a circle. It's a living thing that we should be about, spending time with God, having that intimacy with him. The last set of verses that God really put on my heart for you today was Matthew 13, starting in verse 1. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got in a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood by the shore. And then he spoke many things to them in in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured it. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth and immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up, and they choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Journey Church, our job is to sow the seed. Our job is to sow the seed. To go out there and share the gospel and our lives with others. And let me take some pressure off of you. You're not responsible for the results. That's what that scripture says. But guess what? We are responsible for sowing seed. And guess what? You're always sowing some seed. It's either good seed or bad seed. Always. Every one of our lives, we're always sowing some kind of seed. May we be a people who sow the good seed. As we close, let me ask you some serious questions. First, for the believer, I ask you to pause and reflect and really think about what your life is all about right here, right now, with the understanding of what is the assignment on our lives. Knowing that our lives are but a vapor, here's some of the questions that I've been asking myself. What are you living for? I'm a pastor, and you know, I was living for a lot of stuff that had nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's not just for the pastor. That assignment is on the life of every single Christian. What are you living for? Are you living for your house? Are you living for your kids? Or are you living to be in God's presence? Are you living to tell others about him? See, the things of this world have an incredible lure that wants to take us away from the things that really matter. May we not fall into that trap. Would God give us a stirring in our heart to help others? Do you actively look for opportunities to share the gospel? Or are you thinking right now, man, I can't remember the last time I told somebody about Jesus. If you find yourself coming up short with some of these answers, then guess what? The time is to repent. What does that mean? To ask God for forgiveness, but more importantly, it means to do a 180 degree turn, to live radically different. And that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. As we close, let me paraphrase Joshua 24, 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods of this world. Money, self-centeredness, pride. It says, then serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, I don't know how it could, choose for yourselves this day whom you'll serve. 
whether the gods of our own generation or as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Would you rise with me and bow your heads and close your eyes today? Lord, thank you for the reminder of just how short and precious life really is. It's truly you who breathes breath into our very bones. And Father, in return, as we sang earlier, may the breath that comes out of our bodies give you praise. May we truly be a people who love you with all our heart, all our strength, all our mind, all our soul, with everything that is within us. Will we walk knowing that life truly is but a vapor, that none of us are guaranteed tomorrow? Would we make the most of every single day? Would we love our neighbors as ourselves? Would we be a people who live on mission, who truly take the great commission for what you called it? It's that commission that you place on our life to go out there and change the world, to go out there and share the good news of the gospel with anyone who will listen, to plant seeds wherever we have an opportunity. Those are the things in this life that really matters. Lord, yes, there is a finish line. We pass from this life into the next. For some, that could be today. For some, that could be tomorrow. For others, it could be 20 years from now. It doesn't matter, Lord God, but may we live every day for you. I want to speak first to those of you who are believers in Jesus Christ. Do you feel like you've been taking some things for granted? Is this really how you're living your life? Or is today a day where you're like, man, I need to put my priorities back in order and in check. And I want to live forward from this day forward. And I'm committing that I'm going to do so. If that's you, I would love to personally pray for you. If today's a day, in fact, where you want to dedicate your life to God for the first time or a day where you know you need to rededicate your life to God, I would love to join you in that. With nobody looking around right now, I'd ask you to do something that's just a little bit bold. If that's you that I'm speaking to, would you raise your hand up real high right where you're at? And I'd love to pray for you. Is that you today? You want to surrender or resurrender your life to Christ? I see your hand. Is there others? I see your hand and yours. Thank you, Lord. Are there yet others? I see your hand back there. Thank you, Lord. If you raise your hand, I want to encourage you before you go. If you need prayer of any type when I close the service, there are people up here who would love to join hands with you and pray for you and pray with you. I encourage you to come up and join hands with them. Our prayer team's right up here at the front. Lord, I just pray for everyone who raised their hand. And Lord, if, they've, if they're surrendering their life to you for the first time, I rejoice and join with them. And Father, today we just publicly all declare... That Jesus, you are the son of the living God who died on a cross and rose again. That we might have life, that we might have it abundantly. And from this day forward, we will live our lives for you and you alone. We thank you for forgiving our sin. We thank you for transforming us. We thank you for making us just like new, Lord God. We commit ourselves to living out the great commandment and the great commission in our lives. Father, remind us of your goodness, your glory. Lord, could we develop a level of intimacy with you that we never thought was possible? And out of that overflow, would we go out there and simply change the world? Lord, our prayer is, our hope is that we would see our city transformed by the power of the gospel for the glory of God in our generation. And Lord, I pray that that in our generation means something to the people who are in this room. That means we can't pass the assignment off to somebody else, that this assignment is for us. We're called to do our part. Lord, would you use us? Would you guide us? Would you direct us? Would you empower us by your Holy Spirit? Would you anoint us for such a task as this? Lord, would we remember that life is but a vapor, but Lord, would we make the most of every single day while there is a day and Lord, would we live our lives to make a difference in the lives of others in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Great seeing you. Have a wonderful day.